Hi, everyone. Welcome to a fresh new episode of Osprey Observer TV. And uh, you may know this is a very special episode of Osprey Observer TV as we are calling it a hurricane special as we look into the recovery efforts uh, that are happening throughout our community. Uh, not only the folks that are making that happen, the organizations uh, that are in our community making that recovery happen. And we're talking about not only what's been done in the aftermath of those two storms, but also the long term goal you know, to get our community back on track and what that's going to look like and how you can be a part of that recovery effort. Uh, so joining me as always, Marie Gil Gilmore, Editor-in-Chief of the Osprey Observer, who's our guest today. I am so happy to have the opportunity to do this interview today. It was about four days ago. We were doing hurricane recovery efforts in our community, and I started seeing posters for this organization called Operation Barbecue Relief, popping up that free meals were being distributed throughout Sun City Center, Riverview, Ruskin, all of our area. And I couldn't quite understand what it was all about. And then Friday, I had the opportunity to go to an event at the region where Angel Foundation had 500 Operation Barbecue Relief meals to give to the community. And we did a cleanup effort at the Alifaya River on Saturday. We were able to order 100 meals and feed all of our volunteers and all the residents along the river who literally have nothing. Their homes flooded 25 feet. We were just tearing down drywall and filling dumpsters and taking all the essentials out of their homes and towing appliances with to with trucks just to get rid of them because everything is destroyed. And at the end of our volunteer effort, when we handed each family member and each volunteer a, bar a hot barbecue meal, it was such a blessing to see smiles on faces. So I'm so proud that very quickly coming from North Carolina where he was already a part of a, a relief team working in North Carolina, we have Will Cleaver, one of the co-founders of Operation Barbecue Relief, a national charity that is currently active at 26 sites with their Kansas City Pit Barbecue Masters feeding people, hitting those essential needs right where it is. So thank you so much for being with us this morning, Will. Well, thank you for having me. And tell me a little bit about how your organization, your organization got started. And then I wanna hear about how you got to Florida so quick. And I know we hit a milestone yesterday, so we're gonna talk about that very important number. So Will, how did your, how did Operation Barbecue Relief get started? So back in May of 2011, uh, the tornadoes came through Joplin, Missouri. And there were several of us that were competitive barbecue cooks um, and I wanted to do something and got down there thinking we would serve, you know, several thousand meals over a few days. And actually, with the help of some uh, larger companies as well, we served over 120,000 meals in 12 days. Wow. And, and really realized that because of being a competition cook at the time, you, you would show up on a Friday afternoon in a parking lot, pretty much self-contained. And by Saturday night, you're back home and not really even thinking about how that plays into disaster efforts, because we don't become a, a drain on that community that's already struggling. Um, we're able to show up and be self-contained, have water, power, all that, and get up and start serving meals. Absolutely amazing and incredible. So tell me how Operation Barbecue Re Leaf has changed from that first effort with 120,000 meals in 2011 to what you are today? Uh, you know, a lot of it is uh, some, some of it's trial and error, uh, some of it's luck, and a majority of it is a lot of really good volunteers. Um, and looking to how do we streamline, how do we improve our processes, how do we handle our equipment so that for each person on site that's volunteering, we can utilize that time to get as many meals out as possible to the community that needs it. Absolutely amazing. And what, is, what does the organization look like to this day that you were able to activate so quickly, get here to Florida where we have so much damage and be feeding? And, and I want you to announce the milestone that you hit yesterday of how many meals you have served our Florida community since you arrived after Hurricane Milton? Um, you know, the key to it is that with our equipment, we do try to, well, first we wanna make sure we don't put our equipment or people in harm's way. Um, but as we are getting notified of storms that are coming in and tracking storms, uh, we will relocate equipment to staging areas 
so that as soon as we have kind of the all clear, we can move in. Uh, it also helped that we have a, a, a warehouse in Pinellas Park in Florida and equipment oh, down there. Oh, you do? So, so again, not, not enough to cover the meals that they are serving daily right now, but at least it was enough to get things started and have a starting point. And we actually set up, we're doing meals during Helene and then left because of Milton and then came back in. So it was almost like redoing everything twice. Well, and, yeah, and my question was going to be exactly that, more along the logistical lines, because, I mean, again, not a small, I mean, you're not just coming up with a Weber grill, you know, and, and going no. to town. I mean, this is a big logistical operation. And so um, how is that? You know, you mentioned, you know, that obviously every time you do it, you kind of streamline it, but also every every hurricane or every disaster is different. And so there's different obstacles involved. How could you prepare for that yeah a, a lot of it has been experience um you know obviously if you would have said oh we're doing the amount of meals we've done today five years ago or seven years ago i would have said there's no way um but you start to learn the efficiencies and like you said we bring in commercial equipment we're not cooking on your backyard smoker uh these are a, a smokers that can do 80 to 100 pork shoulders per cook and we've got 15 to 18 of these on site uh, we have several that will do upwards of 160 pork shoulders at one time, um, you know, and, and which is to me, it kind of put in perspective when it takes you almost an hour to load the smoker, that gives you an idea of the amount of proteins you're putting into that smoker. Um, it also helps that we have some incredible partners um, and we have new partners and, and really different partners at different deployments, depending on where it's at regionally step up, uh, helping provide protein or to help give us a discounted cost on what we purchase. And we have semi trucks full of product on site. Uh, I think right now down in Florida, we have probably upwards of 20 different semi trailers on site. Uh, the site wow. I was at, which was doing 10 to 15,000 meals a day in North Carolina and Asheville has nine semi trailers set up. That's, Absolutely. That's, yeah. Amazing. And mm -hmm. what happened yesterday that was so substantial? How many meals have you served in Florida for this particular deployment? We hit just over a million meals yesterday. Wow. And hit a 12 million meal mark for the organization, uh, which is to put that in perspective, it took us almost seven years to get to 1 million meals. Uh, and then since seven years, and now we're when we think you have to do the math, sorry, I'm a little tired from flying in last night. Six years later, we've now done 12 million. And, again, and one million of those were in the last two weeks to our community here in yes. Florida. Yes. What an incredible organization. Yep. I have to say, personally, I had the opportunity to see it in action on Friday and Saturday in our community. And it is so well coordinated. I have not been involved in something that was quite so meticulous. You request meals in quantities of 50 for either relief workers mm -hmm. or to distribute in the community. There's perfect criteria of how you would like to be acknowledged and tagged for either of those uses. Then you order, then you reconfirm the order. And sometimes you might get contacted by a volunteer to kind of just vet everything through. You can order meals, Johnny, up to 5 p.m. the night before you need them. Mm -hmm. I wow. mean, so efficient. And then wow. once your order is confirmed, you receive a QR code to drive through and pick up at the Pinellas Park location and the address. Mm -hmm. It is so well done. This is not a facility where you go grab a meal. No, this <laughs> is where you pick up meals to take back into your community and you feed people. Mm -hmm. And not, no criteria, no pre-qualification, no income verification, yeah. no questions of yeah. why you're saying you need those meals for your people just how you want to get them to your community. So what an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. organization, Will, and kudos to all of the volunteers. Thanks. And when I sent a volunteer to pick up and she came back raving about the efficiency and the setup of the physical location, and, and just, again, the smiles on the faces of our volunteers at the end of just mucking it. I mean, this was a rubber boot situation at the river. It's still not dry enough for cars to actually physically get to the homes. We are in the muck, in the midst of it, and it is dirty work. And to hand them a meal to grab and go and see that smile that they 
appreciated that we appreciated their efforts and then to be able to walk up and down the street of people taking every teddy bear every tricycle every refrigerator everything they've owned their bedding and stick it at the roadside and be able to offer them a free meal was such a blessing to us so personally just having you having had the opportunity to be a recipient of those meals to hand out uh, what what an amazing organization, and I absolutely want to continue to be involved. Uh, we have another event this upcoming weekend at Rotary Camp Florida where cancer uh-huh. camps, kids, adults, it's right in our community. And this camp is so unique for our, our Rotary District because it's in town. It's a 30-acre camp in town, and kids who have cancer can have a caregiver stay with them but have the camp experience of canoeing and archery, and they're close to a hospital and close to a 24-hour pharmacy. And this gives them that camp experience, and it is such a treasure, and it'll be such a privilege to be able to then feed those volunteers and those that community on Saturday again, thanks to Operation Barbecue Relief. So, Will, thank you for what you do, what you continue to do, uh, just not just for Florida, not just for our community, but for those in in North Carolina, in Georgia, some of the most beautiful parts of our country that have been absolutely devastated over the last three weeks by these absolutely, you know, historic storms. And I've never seen the Biltmore get so much damage. And that's such a treasure in our in our world. And so how can people get involved and how can people help you? So the, the two, I would say three things people can do is one, go out to our website, register as a volunteer. Um, even if you are someone that is not able to travel or whatnot, we have a virtual volunteer team that helps organize a lot of things behind the scenes. Um, donations, obviously, um, financial donations, are what make this work. Um, by pooling that money, to, money together, we're able to get discounted prices more so than what an individual going out to a Sam's Club and buying three cases of pork shoulders. Uh, and probably to me, I think one of the biggest ones that sometimes gets missed is that sharing our messaging on Facebook gives us a trust factor when you share that with your connections and you never know where your connections might lead. Um, the, the, and that true personal network is huge because it may find out that a friend of yours, uncle, aunt, grandmother works at a large corporation that's looking to get involved and not knowing where to. And by seeing your comments about what we do, it gives us more, more validity than if they just see it out of nowhere and, know, and they know that we're legit. Um, and anyone that has questions about our finances, we have everything on our website underneath our, our transparency page as well as you know, all of our 990s since our formation, as well as our auditing records that we do every year. So, I mean, I can't even imagine because I'm sure it's it's kind of one of those that when you you probably started, you know, back in 2011, you know, it's like now all of a sudden you've really kind of seen the true need out there for an organization like this. Uh, I mean, I can't thank you enough again for um, what you've done, because I know I remember, you know, you guys were down in Fort Myers, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, was it a, a year, two years ago? Yeah, we've spent a lot of time in Florida, unfortunately, here in the last several years. Uh, I'm glad yeah. we're able to support the communities. And obviously, it's it's never fun going into uh, an area that's been devastated by these storms, no matter what they are. Um, and what we've seen in the last two months, um, the last month, uh, is really kind of unprecedented. And, um, I don't remember the last time of hearing of tornadoes going through the middle of Florida or a hurricane going up through North Carolina and South Carolina. And just watching these areas that once were little towns next to a river that are now gone, Mm -hmm. you know, creeks that were 10 feet wide are now 10 feet deep and 40 feet wide, Um, you know, from what I saw firsthand in Asheville. Yeah. Well, and, and, and not only thanks to you, but thanks to your family, you know, thanks to, you know, all the volunteers, yeah. you know, because the volunteering isn't only the folks that are there in person helping, no. you know, the family is also volunteering because they have to make adjustments and they have to, you know, live with, you know, uh, mom or dad not being around, you know, yeah. to, to help because they're helping other people. And so, you know, the thanks goes well beyond the work that you're doing. And, and again, to, to your family as well. Um, can you, you can just go one more time, run through how to contact you, sure. how to uh, support you through social media so we can make sure anybody that you know might have uh, missed it the first time can get it uh, one more time. 
Sure, they can go out to our website at operationbbqrelief.org and we can they can register as a volunteer. They can also make donations. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, you know, and share our information. The more people we reach with what we're doing, the more people we can help. Um, and that's really the key. Um, and, you know, and the, and the nice one of the things that I hate to say nice things you get around people and it's something that I even forget from time to time. And you get around other people that are volunteering that are just trying to do good for others without anything in return. And it really kind of resets your headspace from all of the negativity we come across in social media this, and even media in general sometimes. Because it's nice to see people from different temperaments, talents and convictions come together just to help somebody they don't even know. Yeah, um, and it, it 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 to me it warms my spirit, charges my batteries, makes me want to do even more. Um, I'm one of those that believe there are more good people out there in the world than bad. And anytime you're on one of these deployments or volunteering anywhere, you see that, and and it's a wonderful thing to kind of pay forward. Um, we all hope that we don't see each other again, but unfortunately, storms will continue. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, but like I said, the website's the best place to start. Facebook, Instagram, that type of thing is really where you can help support us. Uh, again, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, Operation Barbecue Relief, again, uh, we're also going to have their contact information in the description to the video, uh, just in case you want to get in touch with them. Uh, we're doing our special series on Hurricane Milton, Hurricane Helene here with those that are not only helping us in the hurricane reliefs now, but also helping us prepare for the future. So on that note, on behalf of Marie Gilmore and on behalf of Will and, uh, and uh, you know, the amazing people over at Bar Operation Barbecue Relief. This is Osprey Observer TV. Thank you so much for watching.